I wrote my first song when I was 11, but I don't really, wow. I don't really promote that song. Why <laughs> um, not? <laughs> but, I mean, you got to start somewhere. Bring me a bad word. Hi, Michaela. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. My computer is a little grainy looking for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, well. And the lighting sometimes it does that. Kind of old. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to yours, it's like terrible. Yours is like super high quality. <laughs> well, it, it, it's not that high quality, but thank you. I appreciate it. It's the lighting. It's all about the lighting. Yeah, um, you're welcome. <laughs> how are you? Good. How are you? I am doing well. My name is Adam, and this is a podcast about you, your journey in music, and we'll talk about the new song, Ambush, and it comes out on Friday, right? Yes, that's right. And you're playing Nashville. I'm playing, yes, the Wild Horse Saloon on Saturday, so the day after it comes out. Okay, that'll be exciting. I'm in Nashville. Yeah. I recently moved here about a year in a couple months ago. Oh, okay. Do you like it? I love it here. It's amazing. Yeah. It's I love great. the Wild Horse Saloon. I have a six-year-old son who <laughs> had his dance recital there, of all places. Really? Uh, That's yeah, funny. It's, a, it's a beautiful room. I don't know if you've ever had a, a chance to go, but it's such a cool spot. Yeah, the last time I went, it was this kickoff for Shenandoah wade hayes and billy dean's tour and oh, cool that was only a, like a month or two ago so it was pretty recent but yeah it's so cool the lighting is like so professional and the sound mm -hmm. and everything it's really and they got the horses on the ceiling i know that's up. so cool it's weird <laughs> it's weird here in nashville because like you can go to a bunch of different bars and i can't i think it's all red that has the upside down tractor hanging above the stage luke bryan has an upside down truck above the stage and then they have the upside down horses so i don't know if it's like a trend or something but that's interesting i never thought of that but yeah. you're you're 100 percent correct <laughs> well, i didn't really realize that until you think about it but there's a bunch of places that have that sure well um are you in nashville now i am okay cool um so you were born and raised in tulsa oklahoma is that what i saw that's right. I was born actually in Kentucky, but I was pretty much uh, Oklahoma was my home. Like I've lived there since I was 10. So. Okay. So born in Kentucky. Do you remember the first 10 years in Kentucky at all? I do. That's pretty much my whole like younger childhood. It was really fun. We lived out and um, there was a bunch of, for some reason, like Kentucky is very like mountainous and like hollery and like very woodsy. So we lived out and for some reason, I, I'm, I was like a huge fan of animals when I was little and I still am, but for some reason all these cats would come down from these random mountains and they would just stay at our house and it was so weird, but that's something like I- wild cats? Too. Yeah. I was Not like, like bobcats or- No, uh, like... no, they were like normal cats, like house cats, but they were like, I don't know, they would just come and just stay at the house and I would keep them around and play with them, but that's something I really remember that was kind of weird. That's cool though. Yeah, it was so cool. Um, when did you get into music? Were you playing, singing prior to moving to Oklahoma? I started performing and singing whenever I was five. Oh, wow. Okay. So and I started out in Kentucky. I would just sing around the house all the time. And um, I always like listening to country music. And my mom noticed that I would sing all the time. So she put me in some voice lessons to see how I liked it. And I actually really ended up liking it. And I started performing. And then whenever I moved to Oklahoma, I started getting more serious with it. So. Okay, so you're doing voice lessons while you're in Kentucky, moved to Oklahoma, and just continue with that? Or you like do you learn an instrument early on as well? Or so I started taking lessons again at a music school in Tulsa, um, and that's where I learned kind of like song. That's where I started getting into songwriting and kind of my own sound and that sort of thing. I started playing guitar there too. Okay, so you started playing guitar at this this uh, music school? Yes, sir, I did. Okay, very cool. And you were into songwriting then as well? It was all kind of lumped together? It was. It was all kind of like a learning experience for each thing at that school. So I wrote my first song when I was 11, but I don't really, wow. I don't really promote that song. Why not? <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, you got to start somewhere. So that was right. really cool. And then I wrote some more whenever I was 13 and then I just kind of kept writing more frequently so okay so at 11 you write your first song what was it like like finishing a song was that must have been a big deal 
it was really cool. Um, it was very rewarding feeling because it took me a little while just because mm-hmm. I was so young. But I wrote it about moving from Kentucky and it was about my best friend. So her name was Emma. And so I called it Emma's song. And so it was just about moving and what that whole process was like and leaving her and how it was so sad and that sort of thing. So, sure. You yeah. still keep in touch with Emma? I do. It's actually her birthday today. So. Oh, well, happy birthday, Emma. <laughs> Very cool. Is yeah, she still in I, Kentucky? She is. Okay. Well, now you're closer if you're in Nashville. I know. Some, she actually came, I think, last year. She came to one of my shows here, and we hung out, and then she came back to Oklahoma with me. So. Wow. You know, that, yeah, that was fun. But, yeah, we still keep in touch. She's, like, my longest friend, childhood best friend. So it's sure. pretty cool. That is cool. And uh, so we, this is a music school. That, is this where you went to school as well, or was it just something that you did outside of, like, a, as an extra uh, curricular activity? I didn't, I think? I didn't go to school there. I actually um, went to a private school my first um, few years in Oklahoma, and I really enjoyed that. But the music school was separate. It was just strictly for like music and lessons and okay. instrument lessons and that sort of thing. Cool. So once you write your first song and you're you're doing this, and you said you wrote some more at 13. When do you start playing your own songs for people and in front of people? I started doing that when I was 13. I started out playing at the Old Red in Tishomingo, Oklahoma, which was the first one that Old Red is Blake's place. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So. Um, oh, he put his the first one he ever did was in mm-hmm. is was in Oklahoma. I didn't know that until so. Wow. He was born in Ada, and he put, and I guess his childhood or where he grew up or whatever was in Tishomingo. And that's a town not far from Texas in Oklahoma. So it's in South, Southern Oklahoma. So he put that one there and I started playing that, that spot when I was 13. And then whenever they added on the doghouse, which was like where they have all their full band performances, mm-hmm. like actual concerts, I started playing that at 14. Then at 15, wow. I played the one in Nashville and, it, and then I did all of them. and. So I started out playing my own music when I was 13 at the Old Red there. Wow, and how did you get in there? Was it just you submitted a demo or they saw this 13 year old girl come out and that could actually play? And like, tell me like, how did that happen? So at the time my mom was managing me and kind of taking care of all the stuff and mm-hmm. getting me shows and that sort of thing. So she actually reached out to the manager and they let me come play and they liked what they saw so they just kept having me and they're the best though i love going to play over there they're all really nice and really supportive so it it was a great a great start do you still do the one in nashville now that you're here so i did the one in the last time i played at the one in nashville was in april of this year so i still do it um i just don't do it like every month or something it's just kind of whenever i've got like a day or something that I'll be in Nashville and I could go play it. So that's kind of how that works. But yeah, yeah. I, I do play it pretty often. It's a it's, great state. It's probably, you probably do it different, it differently than most artists that play there that would just go up and play. Do you go up and play all your own songs and kind of do a set that way? Or do you, are you there for multiple hours playing covers and then kind of sprinkling in your own music periodically? So I only play there for like an hour or an hour and okay. 20 minutes. And I do all of my own songs and then I throw in a few covers just so that people like know them and they get into it. So it's right. Right. Um, so that's been really cool to just kind of do a mix of both, but very cool. And, um, after getting the, you know, playing there at old red, what was like the next big kind of moment that happened for you? I can't remember like in order, but something that was really cool that was kind of close to that time was there's a place in downtown Tulsa called Kane's Ballroom. I don't know if you've heard of it, but Mm -hmm. it's a really huge deal to play it, especially for like from Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, Arkansas, like all the places. If you're like local. Yeah, it's it's a very historic place. Like Midland plays there a lot. Um, Josh Abbott band. Oh, wow. Okay. Zach Bryan is going to come through there at some point. But uh, um, 
Turnpike Troubadours plays there. There's bands like that, and it's a really historic place. Brooks and Dunn did a music video there. But I got to play there whenever I was 15, and I opened up for John Wolfe. So that was really cool. Wow. Um, that, yeah, that was a really cool thing to do. And that was kind of around the same time as I was doing the All Reds and kind of just getting getting out there. So mm -hmm. that was super cool. Wow, that must have changed quite a bit, though, P from playing yeah. the old Reds to like now you're playing probably more of a big auditor like amphitheater type venue. Yeah. It's almost like a very small version of Billy Bob's. I don't know if you've been to Billy, Billy Bob's in Fort Worth, but uh -uh. it's like a honky tonk dance kind of place. It's really fun. Oh, cool. And yeah, the crowd was like very interactive and they were, I mean, it was different in the fact that they paid tickets to be there. They weren't like just patrons. Yeah. yeah. They actually paid to be there and wanted to like, like see a show. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that was really cool. <laughs> sure. Sure. Okay. And do you end up, when was like, when do you start putting out music, uh, like up online and, and stuff like that? Or is that around that same time period? So I start, I put up my first EP whenever I was 14 and I didn't write any of those songs. So I didn't write my first EP, but then everything else I did. So I've, I had a few singles after that. And then my most recent release was an EP called Miles From Nowhere. And that was released last year. Okay. And I've got yep. Ambush coming up on Friday, this Friday. So that'll be my, um, I don't even know what number that would be but but it's a single right just ambush is just a single it cool is. all yeah. right so when do you like you're living in nashville now full time i actually come back and forth with my parents to oh, okay nashville. so we come about every three weeks and stay for like a week or so oh wow that's quite yeah. often and are you like doing songwriting things and and working with people when you come out here so i come a lot for meetings and then like this trip I've had a meeting with my producer and we went over like our most recent project that we did. We re-recorded some songs while we recorded Ambush so we could get it all recorded and then put it out over the course of next year. Mm -hmm. So he had some recent mixes that he'd done. So I went over there and I sat down with him and we listened through them and we kind of made some changes that I wanted to make. So that's what I've been doing this trip. Um, and then tonight I've got rehearsal. So it's just kind of like whatever is going on for that week mm -hmm. kind of come for that but every time i do get a chance to write with someone i like to i've been writing with bridget tatum a lot recently she wrote she's country for jason aldean and she's really good she's a wow. really good writer so it's been cool to work with her and kind of see how how she does things in her format for writing mm -hmm. very cool and um so miles from nowhere you, you put out last year right that ep and was that something like where were you at so like were you living in Tulsa or were you coming out to in Nashville at all when the pandemic happened like in how like where did that land as far as with you and your music career so I was actually the last show at All Red Nashville before they shut everything down from COVID oh and, wow yeah so that was kind of weird but honestly COVID didn't affect me that much I mean I still played you know like how I was doing and it was it was really cool because it didn't affect me a lot, but at the same time, it did shut some things down to where I had to focus more time on my social media, which was a big thing I needed to focus on because it's so popular now and mm -hmm. getting followers and everything really drives people to your Spotify. So that was good, how it kind of forced me to focus on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and all those different outlets. So that was a plus for sure. Yeah. Do you enjoy working on those? Uh, me personally, I, um, I don't, I'm not a fan. It's just too hard. And I feel too weird. And like, I can't do the first person like, Hey, like oh, I'm doing this. Like, yeah. I, is that, is that an uncomfortable thing for you or do you not mind it? So it took a lot of getting used to for sure with like Instagram lives was a big thing that I needed to do during COVID and that was something that was kind of hard for me because mm -hmm. I would like <laughs> play a song and then get done and I would just be sitting there like okay and you see uh, like hearts and like yeah. thumbs because <laughs> you're not <laughs> used to like not getting like a, some type of reaction <laughs> sure. so just kind of sitting there was kind of weird but I got through the lives but Instagram is something I really enjoy working with mm -hmm. because I love creating the whole aesthetic and getting, you know, like planning out what you're going to do here and how it's going to look and 
like interacting with people through that. TikTok is definitely something that's really random because I could post like the weirdest thing that I never would think anyone would care about. And then that'll be the one, the least effort, that'll be the one that gets right. views. And then the one that I try for hours on getting perfect is like 50 views. And I'm like, what? So yeah, it's, very, it... it's very weird in that aspect, but I do enjoy it. I've started to enjoy it a lot more. Um, as I've grown up, I kind of figured out what I want to do with it. And mm -hmm. I'm not so like awkward as like, whenever I was like 12 or something. Oh, sure, like, sure. Yeah. yeah, no, I feel like TikTok is so, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely, you can just, it's like throwing paint at the wall and like seeing what happens. Yeah. In the sense of like, it's so quick. It's like Twitter, which is like stuff's coming through and coming through. And a lot of what you're seeing are videos of people that you don't even necessarily follow, where if you're on Instagram, your whole, and now it's weird because it's like sponsored ad, yeah. suggested post. Mm -hmm. somebody that you follow like yeah. but before it was like only you'd only see people that you follow and with tiktok i feel like it's just you know it's if you're on that for you page if you land i mean landing on there which majority of people do it that's where it, the algorithm decides yeah whether or not you will stick around and then gaining followers that way like it, the whole thing to me is just so it's just so bizarre <laughs> it's like i really like tiktok in the in the sense that like if you put one of your songs on there and it does well, like you will get so many streams. Like I follow artists on there that their song will blow up and it's just like, that's all you see all the time is like mm -hmm. people using that sound on your for you page, which is really good for artists. But at the same time, I feel like sometimes TikTok is kind of hard because it limits your creativity and kind of like what you want to do. Because like, if not, if the masses don't like what you're doing, then it's like, oh, well, that's not going to work. Like, it's almost like you have to do the trends to get followers and then you can kind of start doing your own thing yeah yeah sense. it's it is it's really an interesting thing and um it's funny yeah you kind of have to do what the algorithm is already kind of picking up to get yourself in there and then if people are engaging then it'll go oh well people are liking michaela's stuff so we'll put her yeah. back in here and get her in front of people again and it's it's similar with youtube i've noticed too is like if you're doing something on YouTube and YouTube's expecting you to do the same thing all the time and then you're like, oh, I'm going to do a challenge video and you've only been putting up your music videos, YouTube's going to be like, uh, nope, like yeah. this isn't what you do. It's it's just such an interesting, the whole like, you know, everything behind social media is just so, it's wild and it yeah. just runs the world, right? I mean, it matters that one algorithm can just decide, okay, we're going to put Michaela's song here and now a hundred million people are going to hear it. Yeah, it's really crazy, but it is something I had to grow into for sure. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy, crazy. So, okay, so you are what you're still going back and forth between Nashville and Oklahoma during the pandemic. Mm. And are you writing with people? And then is that what became Miles from Nowhere? Yeah, so I actually wrote Miles from Nowhere with the same guy, like every song. And I wrote with him a lot um, just because like, we really, he understood what I liked and I understood kind of how he worked. So it was really cool to form all of those songs around kind of like the same sound, the same idea. Like they were all very cohesive, which I thought was really good um, because that was something I've been working toward. And I feel like that EP kind of, kind of like nailed down my sound of kind of the direction I wanted to go, which was really great because as an artist that's what you work towards for ever is like trying to figure out what you want your music to sound like and w how you want people to like relate with your music and relate it back to you so that was sure. really cool with that ep so when you you come into the session and you'd meet with this person and have what an idea and say oh you know i was kind of thinking this for a song uh, yeah so it's kind of weird, but the way i write is like i will think of some like and I don't even know how to describe it. Like for one of the songs that we recorded along with Ambush, I was literally just driving down the road and I thought, and I just like hummed this one thing. And I was like, oh, that's really pretty. And so I like saved it in my voice memo and I sent it over to whoever, to whoever I was writing it with. And I was like, hey, like I want to write a song that sounds like this. And I was like, I think this could be like me singing this at the top of the song or like i think this should be a guitar part and then like once we figure out that you have like the vibe of the song you have like 
an idea of what it's going to feel like. And then you start kind of bringing ideas from that. So that's how I write, okay. which is kind of different than most people, but I guess everyone has kind of their own way. Their own process. Yeah. Sure. Well, tell me about Ambush. You said you recorded that one with another like clump of songs that are what going to be coming out uh, yes. short there, shortly thereafter. I think they're going to come out at the start of 2023 okay. um, and then kind of filter out throughout that year. So cool. I'm really looking forward to that. But Ambush was really cool because it was it was sounds a little bit different than anything I've ever released, which I'm excited about. And I haven't released music in a while, so which is kind of weird to think about, but it's really exciting. So Ambush kind of came about. It wasn't like a situation that I experienced or something that I heard someone else experience. It's totally out of like random like storyteller, like fiction thing mm -hmm. that you know could happen to someone else but didn't happen to you. So it's kind of about this, I read it from the perspective of like this girl not really looking for a relationship or anything like that. And then this guy kind of like coming in and surprising her and like she wasn't expecting it, ambushing her with mm. like his love or whatever you want to call it. His but, charm. Yeah, <laughs> so that's kind of what it's about, and it turned out really cool. It's got a lot of baritone guitar. It's, some people have described it as kind of like Western a little bit. Oh, cool. So it's like Southwestern music with some mm -hmm. like modern country, but traditional with some Western elements. It's really different, but it's really cool. So is that, a, is that something, it, it must be exciting and a little bit nerve wracking before you release a song? Like, how it, is everyone gonna respond to this? Have yeah. you like teased any of it at like on TikTok at any or at, or has no one here heard any bit of it? So I went on a radio tour last week for like an introduction to these radio stations that are that play like red dirt music, like Texas music, mm -hmm. um, and. I did that for a week and I got really good responses from all those radio stations. They That's played cool. it on their radio station and a bunch of them added it to their station before it was even out. So that was really great. Oh, so that's I, huge like, to get a radio ad. I mean, yeah. I come from radio world. Uh, I did that for a very long time, longer than you've okay. probably been alive. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's in getting an ad, even nowadays with streaming being such a big deal. Uh, that's yeah. huge. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, I got six out of the nine stations to add it. So that wow. was huge. But um, I got a good response from them, which was great to hear because that type of music is very like subjective. And I was glad that they liked it. And everyone I've played it for so far has really liked it. I have teased it on TikTok and a lot of people have said that they're excited for it to come out. So that's been great, but it is definitely nerve wracking whenever you release something to, that you really like and, and like to get a bad response from it. So I don't think that's gonna happen just because the feedback I've got so far, but it definitely is scary to think about. Sure, I don't want to put that in your head. I was just curious. <laughs> no, no, you're good. I've already thought about it, so. Okay, uh, so then your show's coming up on Saturday, which is huge, the 30th, uh, but the, the record comes out in two days from now, 29th? Yes, the 29th is Friday. Wow, and then are you excited about the, the show at the Wild Horse Saloon? I am, I'm really excited. I haven't, the last full band show I played was the Highway to Henrietta Festival put on by Troy Aikman in Henrietta, Oklahoma, and Blake Shelton played there, Josh Abbott Band, Stoney LaRue, Wade Bowen. Wow. A bunch of artists. So that was the last time I played, and that was actually my first festival. So it's been a little bit, and I'm really excited that this is kind of kicking it off again, because it's a great opportunity to play the stage, and it's a really good looking stage. So I'm excited for it. Awesome. Are you the only act on Saturday or are there other people playing with you? I mean, as far as like, is there an opener and then you like, I know the show's at 630 ish, but yeah, the show's at 630. They do have people throughout the night. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if they play longer sets or shorter. I know I'm playing for like an hour or an hour 30 or something like that. Um, but it's not necessarily like you're going to open, then it's me, then someone's it's just, oh, it's, it's just kind of like, uh, if you were to go be a patron at that bar at that day and it's kind of like where you're playing this slot kind of pretty much okay cool yeah. that's cool though but yeah a bunch of people are coming out we've got some family coming out so i'm i'm excited for it do you know what time you play 6 30. oh you do play at 6 30. okay i didn't know if that's just when the doors to the bar open oh yeah it's at 6 30. cool awesome well uh super exciting and i can't wait to hear the song and i appreciate your time thank you so much for doing this michaela 
Thank you for having me. Yeah, I have one more question. I want to know, do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Um, let's see. Well, it sounds really cliche, but whenever I started out, I, I had been in Oklahoma for so long and I kind of knew, or not really when I started out, but when I really started figuring out who I wanted to be, what I wanted to sing and the sound that I wanted my music to sound like. Um, once I kind of figured that out, I was like determined that no one was going to change that. And then I would come to Nashville a lot and sometimes it would, it, it would kind of like make me question what I wanted it to sound like because there's so many artists here who like pop country or like rap sort of country. Mm -hmm. And I would come here and I was like, okay, well that's what everyone is selling. Like these huge artists are like, that's what's working for them. And it would sometimes kind of make me question what I wanted my stuff to be like. But then whenever I would go back home and I would be surrounded by stuff that I liked, um, not, not that I don't like that other stuff, but the stuff that was kind of more my thing and more of what I wanted to sound like, it kind of reassured me that you can have your own thing. So my advice would be to, if you know what you want to sound like, don't let whatever you think is selling for someone else, whatever you think is working for someone else, question that because you being different is a lot better than sounding like everyone else. So that's my advice. Bring me the